trying to capture the beauty and the essence of the outdoors, rustic furniture, like this charming chair, was collected by the wealthy in the late 19th century and put into lodges and country houses. Today, renowned rustic designer Daniel Mack uses twigs gathered from the woods to create beautiful chairs. His chairs retain the shape of the tree as well as tell stories. And each story, of course, begins in the woods. When you first go in the woods, you feel overpowered a little bit. The woods are bigger than you, they're older than you, they smell different from you. So there's a kind of a physical feeling that you get, which I think absolutely everybody gets. And that's one of the essential things of rustic furniture. The magic is the choosing of the wood. Uh, for instance, down here, uh, the way it grows up from the ground with that uh, kind of like a hoof there, that gives me a, a certain kind of animation in a tree that I like to put in the furniture so that this, it, it, it keeps the kind of the vitality of, of the woods here. So I can see that as kind of a, um, possibly a leg or even possibly a post in a chair. And then up here, this is, this is really what I like this tree for. This shows that there's been a vine around here at one point, probably a wisteria, and it's, it's lived with the tree and then now it's gone for some reason. I, I don't know why, this is on a deer path, so maybe the deer have eaten it away. But what you're left with is the history of the struggle between the tree and the vine. If you can retain that, so that if you get feet in a chair that look like a hoof, or backs that seem to curve in a couple different ways, or an arm that feels somehow that you can actually feel things that have happened in the tree, you've come to that very special intersection of human craftsmanship and the kind of the honor of the, of the natural form itself. And that's really, I think, what rustic furniture is about. The history of rustic furniture is really interesting because it started not in the United States but in England. There was a tradition in English garden furniture that you wanted to counterbalance kind of the formality of the garden with something rude, something crude. That then was seen by a major landscape architects and designers of the time, most notably Frederick Olmsted, who designed Central Park. That was very new at the time. That wasn't, uh, they had, people hadn't seen that. People who were looking at it were the people who were right there on Fifth Avenue, right across from the park. They were the witnesses. In the late 1800s, New York's wealthy families began building country retreats way up in the Adirondacks. The rustic style, which had been seen throughout Central Park, started a trend, and the grand capture. It became a symbol for relaxing, and soon everyone began to buy it. You would see it show up in photographs of the time. If people wanted to show how well they were doing, they would have their picture taken beside rustic chairs. Their children would be celebrated sitting or standing by the same kind of rustic chairs. Dan's interest in rustic furniture started when he bought a rustic child's chair at an auction. We were having our first child. I said, I want to make one of these. So I sort of copied that antique chair in little maple branches that I cut in the woods. And I'm still cutting those maple branches in the woods. Dan makes other forms of furniture, but his favorite is still chairs. Chairs are the most human form of furniture. They have things called arms, they have things called legs, there's backs to them, there's a certain power to a chair. Cats like chairs and kids like chairs. Dan works in stick style with wood that is dried for up to a year. First thing you do is after your wood is dry, you lay it out and uh, see which way the, the wood looks good. Then you mark the wood that they're equal on both pieces of wood because you want everything to line up. Then you drill it. I can either drill it with a hand drill or I use a uh, drill press. The secret is to keep all the holes in the same line, the same plane. Okay. So the four holes are in, so this is the seat rung, back rung, top, bottom stretcher. You do that on both of these pieces of wood, the holes will line up. Then you want to make the rungs, and you can do that either by hand or with, uh, with tools. So you can whittle a rung by hand with just a pen knife. You should be perfect cylinders because the strength in these chairs comes from a lot of surface touching so that what you've drilled is a kind of a deep hole and now what you fill it with has to be as perfect a cylinder as possible. 
after the posts are drilled and you get the rungs in, then you have to arrange the, the back. And that, to me, that's the most exciting part of it because that's where the little painting of the sticks and the trees comes in. So I have, uh, again, dried sticks. And you begin to just put those on the face of this in a way that looks both beautiful and comfortable. And sometimes you'll want two, sometimes you'll want three. And this sometimes takes me a half hour, an hour to play with this because the spaces in between here are, uh, they have to be pleasant to look at. It can't be too much space and it can't be too little space and it still has to sit against your back. So uh, sometimes what I found is, is a couple of forks, crossed forks seem to work like this. That's a, actually, that's a very nice one. So that your back would be supported here and then that would work. So there's holes drilled in to fit all this together. It's like a great big puzzle at this point. Assembling the form is just the beginning of a rustic chair. It looks gray and kind of dull, which is what the trees look like in the forest. After that, you want to sort of temper the chair a little bit so it gets lightly sanded to take off some of the burrs. And then it gets oiled two or three times with a linseed oil mixture, linseed oil and, and turpentine. And then what that does is sort of hardens the bark. And that turns it kind of a leathery brown, which is really beautiful. It's nice to touch. It's nice to look at. It's nice to smell. So it, it still has your tree form, but now the color has softened and it looks even more luscious. Then after that, you want to put some sort of seed in it. Shakers developed a one inch wide cotton tape that they would weave and it's a very comfortable chair. So I began to kind of fuse that seat into a rustic chair. Each chair that Dan creates is distinct, preserving the original shape and texture of the tree. And despite its non-conventional lines, the familiar characteristics of a traditional chair are retained. It's something about the scale of them. They comfort you, they cradle you, they're like laps you sit in. I build other things, but I love chairs. If you have an heirloom cookie recipe in your family, we've decided to have a Cookie of the Week contest for those of you who would like to share your family's original recipes. The grand finalist will make his... For official rules, visit my website at marthastewart.com or send a stamped, self-addressed envelope to this address.